So in this episode of the IT Experts podcast, I'm really excited to be sharing with you the nine key things that you need to do and understand and consider to be able to generate leads from LinkedIn. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to the IT Experts podcast, the only podcast to help ambitious IT and tech business owners increase their sales, profit and productivity. So hi there, my name is Ian Luckett from Innovate to Success and in this IT Experts podcast, I'm really excited to be bringing to you today the kind of our tried and tested model, the way that we generate leads from LinkedIn and the things that we do to help and understand our IT and tech business owners to use this amazing long online platform to generate leads, to interact, to make great connections, collaborations, clients, customers and all of this great stuff. Now, the one thing we just must remember is, is that it's not as complicated as people make out. Um, if we didn't have LinkedIn, if we didn't have the internet and we were just literally going out there networking, the way that I believe the LinkedIn is like an online networking room. The only most amazing thing about it is, is that when I've done my search, when I've used Sales Navigator, whatever tool I'm using to you know, get a group of prospects or um, you know, prospects together, um, I'm in a networking room with my whole target market. So, We've all been to networking events when you go there and you've got someone there from a window shop and you've got someone there from a, you know, from a tech business and someone there from a logistics company. And it kind of, it's nice to meet up with people. I get that. And particularly right now where we're going through this whole COVID thing, um, it's nice to kind of meet, you know, be getting back to meet up with people and everything like that. But the online world is the way that we can connect and meet more people. I, only last week, um, I was talking to a prospect from Australia. I can deliver him great service and he's the other side of the world, apart from the time scale, which could be a bit of an interesting one. But, you know, there's no real difference than him being five miles down the road or being in Australia. So look, I've got some stats here for you on this. 46% of social media traffic that B2B is going out on LinkedIn. We've all tried Facebook. We've all had a look at Twitter and seen how noisy that is. But people go to LinkedIn specifically to do business. So let me give you another stat here. We've got 97% of B2B marketers are using LinkedIn as a content distribution channel. Now, marketing is great and an absolute place for a marketing agency. Likewise, it's a great place for lead gen companies as well. But what does frustrate me is when um, companies, in particular tech companies, they just go think, do you know, all I need is leads. I'm going to go to a lead gen company. I'm going to go to a marketing company. Um, I very seldom um, engage with marketing companies. Um, I have a couple of them on the books and they are amazing because what they look at is we look at the whole thing. We look at the target market, we look at the business model, we look at your strategy, what you're trying to achieve, what's your USP, what pains are you helping you know, your, your clients with, and all of these really good things. And we look at the non-technical side of things. Now, that's really what you want to be focusing on if, you, um, you know, if you're selecting a, a lead gen or a marketing company. But if you want leads and you go and get a lead gen company and they go all over LinkedIn, they might smash it with some automation, um, they'll give you a load of leads. If you don't know why people are really buying from you, then your conversion rate is going to be low. If you don't know how to close a sale properly, then your conversion rate is going to be low. And, you know, ultimately, some of these big organizations that we're working with now in the tech space, you've only got kind of one bite at the cherry. So we need to make sure that we get it right. And we can use LinkedIn to do that and build up and to, you know, generate better quality relationships. Now, look, here's the last one for you. There's 303 million active users as of today. On, uh, on LinkedIn, 1% of them post, which is just an astonishing amount because that's almost like going into the networking room and keeping your mouth shut. You know, you want to get over there and you want to talk to people and you want to explain to them what you do, learn about what they do, see if there's any synergies, then you'll meet up and go and have a coffee elsewhere. LinkedIn's no different to that. It really is no different to that. The only thing that is different is that people get to check out your profile, they get to check out your media, see what you're interested in. So they know so much more about you rather than just kind of rocking up to a meeting. So look, 1% of people are posting on LinkedIn. So if you're regularly posting on LinkedIn, giving value-based content, what do you think the chances are of you generating a lead and resonating with someone else's pain point in your target market? There's a little something for you to think about. So look, right now we're generating kind of two to three really good quality leads a week off LinkedIn. And these conversations are generating business. These conversations are helping more IT and tech businesses. And what I want to do today, I want to explain to you the kind of the key things, the, the nine key things that, um, that I think are really important, that are helping me 
my business and also they're helping my clients as well. So look, if you're fed up listening to everyone else saying how great LinkedIn is and you're not getting any leads from LinkedIn, then this is exactly what you need to be doing. Listen to this show right to the end and then listen back to it and make a few more notes. Okay, the first point, step one, is about having a killer profile. And what I mean by killer profile is a really succinct profile that explains about you, probably a little bit, maybe a little bit about your personality, maybe some of your values, things like that, who it is you help, how you help them, what you do with it. And this is almost like your new CV. But the most amazing thing that LinkedIn have done here now is, is that, okay, we can get a nice photograph, we can get a nice banner. So the one thing I would recommend is if you've got the aqua blue banner, put something more specific on it that's going to help your target market understand who you are. But the great thing with the, with the headlines, you get a nice, good quality photograph, put the banner in, put your headline in. Now, headline's really important because the headline pretty much tells me, it's a little bit of an elevated pitch, tells me what you do and who you help, essentially. If you've just got your job title in there, it's kind of a bit meh, you know, people aren't really going to understand what it is you're doing. But the most important thing here is, is that when you comment, like, and share on other people's posts, which we're going to talk, to, talk about in a little bit later on, that tagline appears underneath your name. So if you've gone on a viral post and you're commenting and adding value and letting people know that you're the expert in your field, your headline is going to be going for all the people who are going all the way down that thread, answering the questions, comments and everything like that. So it's really important that we get that headline right. Now, also in your bio, you know, we've got the main body of your bio, who it is you are, who it is you help. This is not about you, contrary to popular belief. You know, when LinkedIn started up years ago, it was all about recruitment. It was all about getting yourself another job, getting poached, et cetera, et cetera. Now it's about more B2B, B2B businesses, helping understanding who each other are. So in your bio, put in there, you know, what it is you do, who you help, the kind of pains that your, um, that your prospects are in, how to contact you. You know, remember, you're not in that networking room yet because they haven't accepted that they want to talk to you yet. And just put in there how to contact you. You can also put some media in your bio. And in the bio, you can have different types of YouTube videos and you can have uh, PDFs. You could have your own bio if you've got a, a you know, copy of your own bio. You can then have testimonials at the bottom. You can also have um, what groups you're interested in. And it also shows up your activity as well. So the bio, your, you know, your own profile is so important to make sure that we get this right. Because this is what people are going to be looking at. And as you can see in LinkedIn, you can see who's looking at your profile. And the most important thing as tech business owners is, is that within your bio and within the LinkedIn environment, there's a pretty good chance you're not going to be selling or expecting people to buy from you who are also tech business owners because you're the tech expert, right? Now, what that means and why this is important is, is because what we must do is put the non-tech part of what you do into your bio so how you're helping people out how it makes them feel when they buy from you how it makes them feel when your software or your it support system or all of that kind of good stuff is um you know is is covered off and you've got that nice and safe and secure for them so make sure that although you're great at being technical make sure that it's not all technical otherwise if they don't understand it they're going to get lost in translation okay Point two is all about having absolute clarity in your target market. Remember the networking room? You've gone into the networking room and there's everybody in there from every single sector. And you stand up and you say, hi, I'm doing IT support. I might be doing software. Or I could be doing uh, another tech business or CTO work or whatever it might be. And everyone's going, oh, really? That's great. Well, we're, you know, we're a sandwich shop and this is a, you know, a lorry company and this is a coach company. You're in that room with your target market. But who do you know? Do you know who your real target market is? So work out what sector they are. You know, work out who's buying from you. And more importantly, I was talking to a, a prospect this morning, actually, about this. And some of the software that he was selling is actually going to be solving a problem for someone who's not actually buying it. And what I mean by that is, the person in the corporate role who wanted the software to help his team wasn't the guy paying the money. It was the FD. So there's a different kind of buying signal there that you need to just consider or a buying methodology there. You just need to consider when you're putting out, um, you know, content and your buyer, but make sure that you know exactly who they are. Make sure that you know kind of where they work, what role they're in and understand and make sure then that you tailor any content, your own profile, any posts, any credibility you're trying to put out on LinkedIn. Make sure that you, you focus that purely to that individual. You know, give them a name if you've got a name for them, for your, your ideal avatar. But make sure you're really clear on who your avatar is. And again, with, with the avatar, make sure that you, know, you understand what pain that they're in. Now, you're going to have a technical solution to their actual pain, but it could be about 
you know, you could be installing a new server for them, but in actual fact for them, it could be about reliability and keeping their call center up and running. Um, so understanding, you know, not necessarily what the technical application is, you know, you don't sell JavaScript, you don't sell SQL, as I've mentioned a couple of times before, and nearly ended up having a, a bit of an argument with someone about that. Um, you know, you sell the business improvement, the business efficiency, what are they buying? Look, you know, we're all here at the end of the day, sales is a transaction. Okay. And the reason we're in business is because we're generating business to help more people and we're helping keeping the economy going and our own lifestyles and that kind of good stuff. Right. But people buy from people. No one likes to be sold to. So don't just go straight onto LinkedIn, send someone a message, say, hi, do you want a demo? This is a great offer we've got going on today. That just drives me absolutely nuts because you wouldn't do that in that networking room. Remember, go back to that networking room. Okay, step three, let's talk about content, right? What is content? Content is where you're then going into this networking room, right? And you're handing out your brochure. You're telling people what you're good at. You're telling them and showing them that your testimonials, you're showing them all of the good work that you do. You're showing them your model. What's your business model look like? More importantly, when you've got your business model kind of clarified and, and, and that's all kind of put together, then you can pick off bits of that model. And those are the bits that you talk about with your content. So you could do articles or you could do posts. Okay. So the difference is, is that posts are generally like a shorter piece there. They're character bound. You can put video, you can put text in there. If you're going to do video on LinkedIn, make sure you've got cap uh, captions or subtitles, whatever you want to call them. 80% of people watch, um, uh, watch videos on LinkedIn, probably when Coronation Street's on or EastEnders, when you don't want to annoy the wife or the husband, and um, they're just watching this. So make sure that you've always kind of got your, your subtitles on there. Um, and posts are quite good for that. You can tag people in, you can use hashtags if you want someone's opinion. That's always a good way to get engagement and make sure that you, know, you, you tag others in. Po articles then are more like the blogging platform. So if you haven't got a website, you could use an article um, in, uh, in LinkedIn. It allows you to put a bit of code in there. It allows you to put some nice images in there. You can also do a call to action back to your main website. You can put links in there, make it look quite good. You can also put your opinion when you actually post about the actual article itself. So there's different ways that you can do it. One of my greatest tips actually, and it'll be lovely to see some of you guys do it if you listen to this podcast, is upload a PowerPoint presentation as a file. What this does, it comes up on the screen and then all of a sudden you can just swipe across the different pages in the news feed and the different slides come across it looks absolutely amazing so give that one a little go when you're putting out content but look content right what's content all about it's about value-based content it's all about helping your prospect which we've just spoken about overcoming a problem and they can overcome it with your techn technological technological solution easy for you to say your technical solution there we go we we'll use that one instead the technical solution but make sure that you bring that back to point and you can say, well, this is how our system works or this is what we do here or this is what we do there. So bring that all the way back in. But there's loads of different ways, um, lots of different types of images, lots of different types of text. You can also see on the articles and posts, you know, how many people have viewed it and comments and things like that. People can get a bit hung up on how many people view, comment, like, share and all that kind of good stuff on LinkedIn. I've always been taught never to worry about that too much. Uh, when you actually look at how many prospects you actually need, it's good to get an engagement. And do you know what? Some of the best posts I've ever put out are the ones where I've been having a crack and I've just come back from a run or I've gone out and bought some lunch or I've taken a stupid photo or something like that, which is quite good because it brings out the kind of the personality in you, which is why, you know, I like to do these um, podcasts as well on video. So if you're watching, if you're listening to this, then we've also got all the podcasts over on YouTube as well in the library over there. So you can go and check them out and you can uh, kind of see what we're up to and you can kind of see some of the, uh, some of the different things as well. We're doing more in the how to type of stuff over on LinkedIn. So that's the content. Make sure that you're regular with the content, make sure that it's value based, make sure that you're giving away. Don't try and sell on LinkedIn. It's a social selling platform. It doesn't, which does not mean you can go and sell, but value based. So people go, that's a really great piece. I like this guy. Let me go and check his bio out. Oh, on his bio, it's got how I can contact him. Let's give him a ring. I think he can help me out. That is how it can work. So step four is all about engagement. And, you know, if you're going to go into that networking room again, uh, this show wasn't actually supposed to be structured around LinkedIn being a networking room, but it seems to be panning out quite well. So that's quite good. Um, going into that networking room, are you going to go and stand in the middle of the room and not say anything? Of course you're not. You're going to go and talk to people. You're going to share some stories. You're going to help them understand what you're about. You're going to help them work out what you're, um, what you're around as well. When you're out there, when you're engaging, you know, like and comment. But when you comment, 
Um, yeah, okay, you can, you can write some funny comments if you want, but put a comment on so it's going to add value. So it's going to position you as an expert. It's going to be, oh, this guy knows about Cisco servers, or this guy knows about a particular type of CRM, or this guy you know, it knows about a particular type of MSP practice or, or, or whatever it might be. Um, make sure that you're adding, you know, you're building up your credibility. Remember, when you comment, your title is going to go into the, uh, into the comment box, uh, and then that's going to bring you up as, oh, he or she can help me out doing, um, you know, doing that because that's what their title says. Let's go and have a look at their bio. Let's go and have a chat. So step five is all about having a laser focused outreach strategy. Now, what I mean by this is you've gone into the networking room. Who are you going to go and talk to? You're going to talk to everyone. You're going to shout at everyone or you're going to call different people out. And that's exactly what we need to do on LinkedIn. So you need to build your connection list. If you don't build your connection list on LinkedIn, guess what? Your network's going to stay the same size. and You're going to be talking to the same people in the same room for the rest of your life. So go to outreach, either use a Boolean search on LinkedIn or go into sales navigator and find the people who you want to connect with. Find the people who you're going to go and add value with and start a conversation with them. That's all you need to do. You're not going to go in there and get your brochure, thrust it in their face and say, buy that. So don't do that on LinkedIn. You know, when you go in there, have a conversation with them, go to connect with them. Let them know why you're interested in their profile. Go and check their profile out. They're going to know you've been on their profile. You know, be you. Because at the end of the day, if you're not you, and then when they do get to meet you, they realize that you're not the same kind of person as they thought you were before, then they're not going to be that interested in, in having a proper business relationship with you. But I'm getting really conversational right now with, with my prospects, and we'll have a little chat. And you know what? There was a guy who came back to me the other day, and he said to me, he said, right, Ian, um, I've been watching your content for the last year. I've uh, been procrastinating, to be honest with you. And this is me not procrastinating anymore. And now he's in the IT experts community and he's getting great value and we're really helping him out. And we, he's, he's moving forwards in his business. But people will buy when they're ready. And that's why the content, that's why the outreach, that's why the engagement is all this whole thing. So remember I was talking to you about lead gen? Go and get a lead gen to go out there and to go and hit a load of people up on LinkedIn, which is absolutely fine. But if they can't see you having that activity, you're not engaging with them, you're not putting out value-based content, you're not putting all these other good stuff out there, they're just not going to resonate with you. They're just not going to think it's worthwhile having a conversation. And once you connect with people, you know, have a series of questions and have a series of, um, of conversations that you're going to have with them. You know, ask them how they're doing, ask them how the business is, you know, pre-COVID, pre this awful pandemic that we've been going with, you know, strike up a bit of a conversation, see if there's anything they're interested in, and then have a virtual coffee, just have a chat with them and see what's going on in their world. And, you know, and, and build up your network like that. It's just like being in that networking room. So item six is all about your personal profile against the company profile. Now, people buy from people, okay, people do buy from companies, don't get me wrong. But on LinkedIn, you've gone in the networking room again, remember, and you're talking to the people and you're talking to the individuals. Now, the profile is really good. The, the personal profile is really good because that will help you understand um, who you are. They'll help them understand you know, kind of who you are, what you stand for and all your values and everything. And the company profile is a bit more of a longer burn. So normally it's useful when you've got more employees or you've got a larger company because the employees will then start to share posts out. It's more about what the company's doing, the strategic relationships the company's having. So you might sign up a big contract with a server manufacturer or a networking company or a software company or a particular type of licenses or whatever it might be. And those are the things that are um, important for the company. And then you can post that out personally. Uh, most of the work on LinkedIn or most of the lead generation on LinkedIn is, is, is person to person, H to H, as they say, not B to C or B to B. It's H to H, human to human. Um, so use the company profile, but don't expect to put a company profile out there, a couple of blogs and have a thousand people follow it in a week. It doesn't work like that. It takes a long, long time. Again, try and vary up the content that you're putting on your company profile as the one that you're putting on your personal profile and just make it a little bit more varied for your prospects. Step seven is all about the CTA, the call to action. What do you want people to do? So whether you're using lead magnets and what are lead magnets, in? it's like a survey. It could be a survey. It could be an ebook. It could be a white paper. It could be a little test something like that where they're going to you're going to take them off linkedin and then you're going to um, you know get them onto your website get them into your crm and then nurture them through email marketing or whatever it might be um, make sure that it's got you've got a clear call to action make sure that you've got a really clear you know what's the point of me reading this book it's all about time management if you want to know how to be to be better with the time then come to one of my online master classes or come and you know experience the it experts group or the mastermind or whatever it might be that you know that suits your best sort of thing but Make sure that you've got a clear call to action so people understand what it is 
you know, that you're doing and what's the logical next step in this relationship? You know, if you're in that networking room, you say, let's meet up next week and have a coffee. If that's the right thing, jump on Zoom or go and meet them. And then you can go and have a, have, have a catch up and you can find out exactly a little bit more about what their business, you know, what their business problems are that you can solve. And more importantly, why they contacted you or why they, you know, why they connected with you. What was it in my profile that you thought was interesting? And that's the bit that they want to talk to you about. Not all the stuff about your wife and your kids and all your holidays and things like that. It's all about the stuff that they are, you know, that they are resonating with because they've seen it in your profile. Always a great question, actually, if someone calls you up, you know, what was it in my profile that you saw? Oh, I see you do, do, do stuff about lead generation or IT businesses or, you know, um, automation or whatever it might be. Talk to them about that. That's what they want to talk to about. Point eight is all about SSI, which is the social selling index. Now, if you go into linkedin.com forward slash sales forward slash SSI, it will give you your rating. And this is the rating that LinkedIn thinks it's, it, it likes you. Don't forget, LinkedIn's an algorithm. So at the end of the day, the more you connect with the right people, you engage with the right people, you put out value-based content and people engage with it, it's going to like you. It's going to start pushing your posts to the top of people's profiles. It's going to start putting it out to the more relevant people who are interested in it. And this comes under your SSI score. So go and have a look at it. Don't get too hung up about it because the more you're active on LinkedIn and if you do the things and you follow the kind of process that we're talking through here and understand how, how this kind of works, how LinkedIn works in its entirety, then it's going to help you generate more leads and your SSI will go up. But it's a really good yardstick to see how well any of your performance or activity on LinkedIn is starting to help out and resonate with your, uh, with your target market. So go and check it out. LinkedIn.com forward slash sales forward slash SSI. And finally, step nine or point nine I want to talk about is bots. Hmm, is what I'm going to say about bots. All sorts of automation bots going on with LinkedIn at the moment, all sorts of, all sorts of things. In actual fact, across all platforms. Um, I have always been against bots. I've always been against automation because, as I said a minute ago, they're all automation. They're, they're all algorithms. And as soon as they find out that you're trying to cheat the system and you're not staying on the platform, then they're going to get annoyed about it. They're going to reduce your reach and they're not going to put your posts in the right place. So me, I'm kind of quite organic with it. You know, we do all, the, um, we do all the, our own messaging um, that goes out natively. All our videos go into the platform itself. We don't post links to YouTube or anywhere like that. LinkedIn don't like you taking people off their platform. They want you to keep on it. So in actual fact, if you put a link within your post to say, hey, go and check this post out or go and check this, this article out, they're going to probably going to penalize you for that. So a little trick there. Don't tell them. Pop it in the comments. Uh, if you put the link in the comments, then that will help get it away from the main post and it will help the main post get out there. And then the comments below will stay exactly where they are. There are some, I've seen some amazing automation um, tools out there that look and apparently get some really great results. Um, would you send a robot into your networking room to do the talking for you? I think that kind of answers the question. Um, I wouldn't. So that's why I'll do it myself. So it's about, you know, H to H building those relationships. You can try it. You can give it a go. If it works for you, then great. Uh, personally, I'm not a great advocate of them, um, but that's just really my personal opinion and kind of what's working right now. So look, LinkedIn is an amazing part of anyone's marketing, um, you know, toolkit, generating leads, helping you nurture, grow clients, nurture and grow those prospects as they're coming up but the thing that we know about it experts is that you need more than that when you're actually trying to grow and scale your it business you know it's about the vision it's about understanding your commerciality and the packages and the deals that you're putting across it's understanding your sales and marketing sales activities um, it's understanding how you're managing with your team and also you know a lot of business performance and measuring it and that's why what we do is we help people understand that whole thing you know the whole process now it might seem a bit daunting, it might seem a bit complicated, but if you've just been plodding along and you want to be come ahead of your competition, then look, just get in contact with me here on LinkedIn. It'd be lovely for you to say, look, I'll just listen to your LinkedIn podcast on LinkedIn. Let's connect and find out how we can you know, have one of those chats and have one of those conversations. Um, you know, we've got an online community, the IT experts community. We have an amazing peer group. We have all sorts of different types of masterclasses online to help people out so that when they're ready, 
you know, they can come and they can come and learn on how they take their business to their next level. So look, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I hope you've enjoyed the show. Um, if there's anything else that you want to know about LinkedIn or how to help your IT and tech business grow on LinkedIn or even off LinkedIn, if it's a, if a different marketing strategy you want to use, then please just reach out. You know, there's a message button here on LinkedIn. There'll be one in the show notes as well. Um, and that's about it for me today. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Go and have a great day. Go on to the website at innovatetosuccess.com. Check out some of the other great podcasts that we've got there as well to help you with your IT and your tech business. Enjoy the rest of the day and I'm going to catch up with you soon. All the best now and take care. So thanks very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, then please remember to subscribe, rate and review. I'd really appreciate that. And also check the show notes out for all the latest developments at the IT Experts Growth Academy. If we haven't already, then let's connect on LinkedIn, YouTube and over our website at innovate2success.com. Until next time, you look after yourself and I'll catch up with you soon.